Today's video, we're gonna be dropping you a little free mini scheme here out of really, I think, one of the better formations in Madden, one of the more complete formations in the game. And it's gonna be out of the Jets playbook. Now, before we get into game, we're gonna be going through our settings. So in the main menu, just tab over here to settings. We wanna talk a little bit about free form, doing something a little bit different. Um, the playbook we're gonna be taking a look at today is going to be the New York Jets defensive playbook. And in this game, for the most part, I think you either wanna be in the Kansas City Chiefs defensive playbook, or you wanna be in the multiple defensive playbook playbook I really like Kansas City I think it gives you the most versatility now from there what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be coming down here going through our settings the main thing is for coin toss first choice you want to make sure this is always on kick coin toss second choice you want this to be on with wind and then passing type I'm actually going to change this to go back to placement and accuracy and I'm going to go near 20 out of 20 kind of mess around with that and see but I was on placement power 5 out of 20 if you're newer or a beginner or you just struggle with freeform like I do I really think placement and power five out of 20 helps with overthrows. You don't overthrow the ball as much, but I'm going to try this out just kind of later, later in the year, wanted to try out something different. Um, auto flip defense play call. We're going to be turning this off uh, for defense because we can toggle it on if we ever want to, uh, but stock, I'm going to have it off for most blitzes in this game. You want to have auto flip off this year. Defensive ball hawk, we're going to have that set to on. Defensive heat seeker uh, assist is going to be on. Switch assist is going to be off. And then uh, basically that's the settings. Now, what I, what I really want to recommend is if you're in regs, that's all you got to have to do. But if you're in mutt, you need to go into ultimate team here and you need to actually tab over uh, to the settings menu. So I'll show you how to do that. So basically when you go in and then we'll talk about our team breakdown as well in terms of abilities, what we're doing for this scheme. So once you go in, if you ever get this black screen, I think hit circle or B and it will fix that. All right, so you're going to click game options there at the bottom. Um, it's typically one of your, you know, in, in, internal buttons there. And then you're just going to go through here and just make sure that all your settings are the same. Because as you can see here, it actually did transfer over, but I just know from experience, sometimes it doesn't. So if you're playing MUT, you need to make sure that these settings do tra indeed transfer over. All right. Now I want to go over my team real quick and then we'll get into practice mode. What's really cool about practice mode and MUT is you can go to practice and then it will actually bring it up and you can adjust your lineup right from that screen. So really like that feature. The zero show 50 out of 50 theme team is by far the best theme team in the game it's really not even close and for this scheme what we're going to be recommending that you utilize from an ability perspective is really the only cards you have to have you can actually do this a little cheaper than i did um i actually ran out of coins when i was building this team so i don't even have the best running back uh, you don't need the best running back you don't need the best team in madden Really, Madden, especially this year and really last several years, is an ability-based game, all right? So outside of speed, all that really matters is abilities. And I think abilities ultimately trump speed. So if you have better cards that get better abilities, then you want to prioritize those. Now, offensively this year, there's really no necessity for any ability outside of uh, really set feet lead. And you can even get away without having set feet lead, but set feet lead is very, very effective. So I just want to walk through what I'm doing on William Perry here. Um, if you don't want to use William Perry, much cheaper option would be Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck is very good. Um, you just get Gunslinger for zero AP by having uh, William Perry here. So the main ability is set feet lead. It is the most important ability in the game. If you are in rut and regs, you want to use the teams that have set feet lead. Okay. If you are in mutt, you want to use the quarterback that gets you set feet lead. Okay. Set feet lead is the best ability in the game because it allows you to literally throw through zones and allows you to get the ball out quicker uh, or allows you to, to have more velocity on your passes so that the zone defenders can't break as quickly on the ball. Super important ability. Uh, gift wrap, just because I had an extra AP here, um, and I'll talk about that in just a second. And then uh, Gunslinger, zero AP. Okay, um, I'm just doing Escape Artist, honestly, just messing around with it. I don't really care necessarily about this. And low-key, I'm kind of thinking of going away from the fridge. Um, but as of right now, he is kind of the standard QB1 in the game, so that's why I'm, I'm rocking with him. Uh, but the main things here, other than that, are your route chemistry. So in, in offense this year, you don't need route tech to beat man coverage. You don't need short and elite. You don't need that stuff as of right now. Um, so what I like to recommend is 
slot apprentice, tight end apprentice. Um, those are going to give you really the best bang for your buck in terms of route co- combos. So Tony Gonzalez gets tight end apprentice for one AP and Tyree kill gets slot apprentice for one AP. There's another card. I think it's the players. The last name is rice. He's on the chiefs. He's a lot cheaper than Tyree kill. He's a, I think one speed less and he gets, um, slot apprentice for one AP. So what I might actually end up doing is selling the fridge and getting myself a running bag and then, um, actually getting slot apprentice. The only other ability that I would really recommend is backfield apprentice or backfield master. Um, the main abilities you want are slot apprentice, tight end apprentice, backfield apprentice. Those are the best apprentice abilities this year. So those that's kind of what I'm doing in terms of abilities. And then we're going to get into the audibles and plays in just a second. So real quick, want to talk about audibles uh, for this scheme. And we're going to be doing just a little mini scheme here on Jets. Jets has so much. We're going to be doing a bigger breakdown here later on. Now, if you want to get my full Jets offensive ebook, we actually have it available in the Patreon. It breaks down everything that you can do out of this playbook. Super, super high level offense. So if you want to get access to that, and we're going to be updating that scheme this week for our Patreon members, because I do believe, especially as of this point in the year with the new year, it is the best scheme in the game. Now that we have all the different routes that we can be able to create. So, um, Anyways, if you want to get my full offensive ebook on this, it's in the Patreon. It's the best place to get better in Madden for ten bucks. You get everything. You get all the ebooks, everything for just ten dollars. So if you want to get that, link's going to be in the description. But for this video today, we're just going to be going over this bunch strong offset formation, and we're going to be uh, just doing a very simple uh, format here. So what I like to do is we're going to be coming out in the play uh, RPO alert. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to be coming out in the play. Uh, corner strike. Uh, actually, you know what? For simplicity, we're just going to set corner strikers are audible. That's literally it. And then we'll come out and flood. I'll explain why when we get into the breakdowns. Um, but real simple. Now, what you could also do if you wanted to kind of mess with audibles and stuff like that, you could come out and bunch tight in because it's a strong left formation. And then you could basically audible to bunch strong offset. It would be a relatively quickly uh, a quick transition. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, audibling around this year is really really effective, and this is uh, kind of a, a little bit of an, a reason why. So you see here the formation is strong left. So if they have auto flip on, or they might set their coverage to the left side. Well, if I come out and then I audible just one click over to bunch strong offset, now the entire formation flips basically, and it's a very quick transition. So you can do this relatively quick and kind of create quick snaps out of the huddle. All right. So that's an option. But for our purposes, we're just going to be breaking down much strong today. Just an incredible, incredible formation. And there's very simple plays that can really make a big difference in your offense. So that's what I like to do in terms of audibles for the bunch strong. And we're going to get into the play breakdowns. Now, the cool part about Bunch Strong Offset is that you can run this wide side or short side. It has setups for really everything that you want to be able to accomplish. For this, uh, for our purposes today, we're going to primarily focus on this scheme as a wide side uh, offensive scheme. I do think that's going to be the best way to run this because it has it gives you capabilities to run really some of the better plays in the formation. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get into the setups. The main play that we're going to be coming out in every single time is flood. And the reason we're going to be coming out in this play every single time is because it's a one play touchdown. Um, it's a one play touchdown against cover two short side. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but it's really just kind of gives us the capabilities to quick snap. Now, what we're going to also do off of this is we're going to, our, our number one play though is actually going to be corner strike. So um, with corner strike, here's the setup that I would recommend to really anyone that's running this play because I think it's the best. It's probably the num- one of the number one plays in the game this year. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to corner route the slot apprentice. So we're going to slot apprentice corner route the slot receiver. We're going to streak the tight end. We're going to motion the running back out, and we're going to put him on a streak. So as you can see, these are the these are the routes on the field that we're going to be utilizing. Now the cool part about this is most people are not going to play a lot of man coverage this year. You're seeing a lot more zone coverage, and this concept right here is the best zone beater in the game. However, if they do play man coverage, the sharp cutting um, this sharp cutting corner route to Dion very effective for being able to get separation against uh against man to man now if they press if they press us on this play which let me actually sorry i apologize i messed up my messed up my setup here 
So let's say you're playing dollar or something and they're pressing you out of the man coverage. Uh, if you look here to the right side, Tyreek Hill's corner route, if that corner route gets over the top of the press, you could free form and high point that up and over the defender and you have gift wrap, right? So a lot of times you're going to catch those 50-50 balls. Wasn't able to catch it right there. We're going to have better plays for man coverage uh, later on. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that corner route, but just trust me that that corner route, I'll throw it one more time for you. A lot of times what will happen is, see how he gets this step and then you can kind of sneak it over the top of the defender okay typically i don't think i've ever thrown an interception on that specific corner route against press man uh, so just keep that in mind if it's off coverage man it's a little bit easier uh, for corner routes to get separation so just keep that in mind and we'll throw it one more time see if we can actually complete it see how they get these random actually got kind of low key practice mode is just kind of random honestly with main coverage we'll go we'll have a better man beater coming up so uh, we'll wait on that. And uh, I really want to stress how good this play is against zone coverage. You really can't. It's almost impossible to defend this play in zone coverage because of the options you have. Um, so what you're going to see here is if they do run zone coverage, the short corner route to circle, if it's cover four or cover three, is going to be wide open. The deeper corner route is going to pull the outside quarter of the outside third defender on that side and this is what makes this such a good wide side concept because normally you can't really flood wide side out of compression but with this concept you certainly can you'll see here here's cover three watch that short corner just get over the top of that purple and then you just got to basically get that ball you know fit that ball in on the sideline now the other thing that you have going for you here is this is going to funnel them into cover two and i'll talk about cover two in just a second and how we can attack it but if we look back side here to the left side you have a streak and a c route combo so this this c route is really good it's better than the double post in my opinion because it's going to run slightly deeper and it's going to do a little bit better job at getting separation against cover four and really cover three. So if they're running, um, you know, let's say they're running this cover three and they're going to use that curl flat defender to try to, you know, get a little bit more depth, right? The C route is deep enough that it gets, it gets over the top. I got to wait to throw that just a little bit later in the route, um, which we'll show here, but very nice little setup here for zone. So you can beat really everything that they can do, um, really everything that they can do on that left-hand side. Now, so that I stop calling the play flood, I'm actually going to come out in corner strike, and I'm going to turn auto flip on just for the purposes of going through coverage. All right. So if you look here to the left side, uh, this is a stock curl flat. I think typically this is going to go You'll see here, it looks kind of covered, but once he cuts to the sideline, he'll get over the top and clear it with, with a lot of ease, right? Now, let's say that they call cover two. Cover two will help defend the C route. It'll help create, basically, what cover two does a good job of is it defends these shorter corner routes, right? Well, the problem with that is you have a deeper corner route. So you have this route to R1 that is going to run, you know, about a more of a traditional depth. So you see here, it's going to get over the top of uh, a standard cover two. So they're kind of left in this dilemma of how they're going to defend this. And really the best way for them to defend it, honestly, is to man up circle out of a cover three shell. But most people aren't going to do that. And if they do, if they do that, then again, you have this backside over here, the C route. Now this C route on the backside is also pretty good against cover two, because you'll see here it gets enough depth. Actually didn't get quite enough depth there. So it's probably better against a press cover two. So if they're backing off that, that cloud, over there on the left, then kind of an, a, a key there that you might not want to throw that if they're in a cloud flat. But if they're pressed up, typically this C route, you could throw it up and over the top to the sideline. Yeah, you'll see here. See a little lot more separation there and see how I can put that, you know, kind of on the sideline. So really, really good play for uh, really all kind of zone coverages that you might face. All right. So that is that is pretty much the double corner route concept. And it's why the double, it's why really we want to run this playbook because this is one of the best plays in the game. And you get a C route to the left, you get corner routes to the right. There's a lot of value in this play. Now, if you think about what this actually leaves them vulnerable to, it is essentially a rolled outside third defender. And this is where the play flood as a quick snap option becomes very advantageous to us. So I'm going to come out in dollar now and we're actually going to put a 30. Uh, we'll put a 30 yard cloud. I think this can get over the I think this can get over the top of a 30 yard cloud in practice when I know it can in game. Okay. 
So let's say they do this. So if they give you this look right here, this is important that it's this look right here because this is the only way they can stop the short corner route. If they back this guy off, this is a 30 yard cloud, right? So if they back off that 30 yard cloud and we go back to corner strike, I wanna show you one thing here real quick. The short corner will get underneath of a 30 yard cloud, as you can see. So they can't they can't really run a backed off cloud flat, right? They have to, it has to be a standard uh, depth of a cloud flat. So once they start to be able to defend uh, corner strike, then you can go to this play flood. And this is a quick snap. All you have to do is snap the ball. And what you're going to see here is because we have this real glitchy fade route. And I, as I said, I, I, I think this gets over a little better in an um, in actual game. So just please keep that in mind. But we have this. Um, let me show it to you again here. We have this super deep corner route to the tight end. I think it's because he's getting bumped. It's always because he's getting bumped. Let me pinch the D-line, which is actually what you'd probably see. And let me base the line. All right. Hopefully he doesn't get bumped this time. Well, you see here, if he runs his route clean, you see how he kind of gets over the top. And not really the greatest in practice mode. In game, you get a lot better chance of him getting over the top. Now, a real simple alternate version of this play that will work for this situation is another quick snap. You can quick snap this play. You can snap the ball pretty quickly here. All right. So let's say they're giving you that look, but let's say they're manning up circle. This is a pretty popular adjustment. And I even talked about how this is probably the best way to defend it. So let's say they're taking this guy here and they're manning him up. This will stop the RPO. This will stop some of the other things, right? Well, then what we can do here is we can quick snap flood, but we're going to put the tight end on a tight end apprentice corner. As you can see, we get the short corner again. And now this short corner gets underneath of that cloud flat defender. All right. So that's kind of another reason why I really like having flood. Uh, another really underrated reason that you have this play is because you have this slot receiver that you can put on the slot apprentice corner, and then you can put the tight end on that flat. Now you might say, well, what's the, what's the reasoning behind that? Well, again, if you run this right here, you see that that slot receiver can really get a, get over the top on that defender. Now, I have universal coverage on, on Bo Jackson there, but one of the things that I think is fairly significant for our purposes here is notice how this fade route, because it's not a streak, because it's a fade route, that outside third defender has to run with it. You'll see. See how he has to run with that? Then you can throw your corner route underneath. So it's a great way to clear out those defensives that a lot of people like to run where they're using outside thirds from their safeties. So let me give you just kind of a little bit of a better picture of that. This is probably what it would really honestly look like here if they're trying to stop your short corner route. But if you watch here, watch that out, super clear that out, that outside thirds, it's a real tight throw, real tight throw, but it is able to be completed. So I really do like that play um, in, terms of, in terms of attacking zone. Now I did want to talk a little bit about just your standard cover three coverage, because if you do see your standard cover three coverage here and you run this setup, you'll notice, actually, I think I forgot to audible, but you'll notice that the corner route on the right against a standard cover three shell. Let me, let me go back to that. Watch this fade route. I just think it's interesting how this fade route, see if, I, see how, if I freeform this down, I can kind of throw it away from the KO. So those are a couple of different my favorite setups from Flood. Please don't sleep on just hot routing the tight end to a tight end apprentice corner. I think that is a very good way to run this play. And uh, again, we're just changing the depths of the corner routes, and it's what makes this so good. And then the other cool part about this is you could also, you know, then put the slot apprentice on the corner and then take the tight end and just simply put him on a basic little flat route. And now you have a different type of flood concept. So you, you have corner routes to all three of your receiving threats, and they're all at different depths, which are really, really cool. All right. So that is uh, going to be it for the play flood, at least right now. And then I wanted to get into really some nice man beaters for you guys, because I know that man coverage uh, can be hard to beat this year. So all you're going to do 
The next two plays are really primarily for man. They will be still decent against the zone, but they will beat man. So the first one is Y trail. Um, this one is super effective. So all we're going to do is we are just going to drag our slot receiver. Then we are going to flat this outside bunch or outside bunch receiver, and we're going to wheel the running back. Now, the purpose of this is because a lot of our offense runs through the circle receiver, so they're going to be manning him up, cross manning him, dropping zones over there, all those kind of things. Well, then we can drop this guy on a flat, and now he's almost like it's almost like they wasted an adjustment, right? But what you'll see here is you have a lot of opportunity for different routes to come open against main coverage. The best route is this running back route. So if they're playing just straight man on the right and they're not putting zone coverage over there to help, this play right here will just crucify them. I mean, the running back wheel is such a good route this year for beating man coverage. So you want to be utilizing running back wheel. Now, the other route that you have, a couple of routes, the rack catch animations are really good this year. So you can throw the drag route against man coverage over the middle. You can throw the running back route. Um, on the left-hand side here, this post route, when he cuts to the middle, he's going to get open against man coverage, so you can throw him on the cut. I do have middle-of-the-field help. I'm in a cover-one style defense, and I'm still able to throw this post. You'll see here again, when he cuts over the middle, I can just click on, aggressive catch it, and it's going to be wide open. So that post route is super valuable uh, for what we're trying to do uh, offensively here. So if you want to smart route that post, you certainly can do that as well. Uh, the tight end route, it's a little tighter of a throw because I have a three rec on the field. But let's say they're making some adjustments, right? So let's say, you know, they're making some adjustments. So they know, well, we're going to take away the, the drag by putting this guy on a hard flat. We're going to take away the post by putting this guy on a third. And then we're going to have this guy over the top for the running back route, right? Kind of standard adjustments. This obviously uh, means they would have to user somebody too. So just kind of keep that in mind. But um, the beauty of this is this tight end trail route late over the middle typically does beat man coverage. Um, if he would run his route a little better than he did uh, right there, you would be able to see that. So we'll just get the yellow zone out of the way. But you see, beats man coverage. So you have a lot of man beaters on, on this route. Now, uh, this kind of comes to a second setup that I think is actually pretty good as well. And this setup, what we're going to be doing is we are going to streak our tight end. This is going to kind of make this a little bit more of a zone beater. Uh, we're going to streak our tight end, and then we're going to wheel our running back. Now, it kind of looks a little funky, but this is a lot better against zone coverage, and ideally you run this with your bunch to the wide side of the field. Now, the man-to-man -man read that we have here is this really this underneath drag is super good against man coverage underneath, so we're able to kind of get back to that you know beating ability to beat man coverage with the circle receiver. The other thing that we have, uh, again, is our running back. So if they are running man coverage and they don't have safety help to the right side, the running back will beat man coverage over the top. Your post route on the left side will beat man coverage when he cuts to the middle of the field. But I wanted to kind of talk about this a little bit more in terms of zone, specifically like your base press cover four or your base press cover three. This is a very good setup for that because what you're going to see here is this wheel route will actually pull the outside third, outside quarter defender. He does a little better job against outside quarters or outside thirds than he's going to do against outside quarters. And I do have deep zone knockouts and all of that stuff, so keep that in mind. But what you'll see here, let me see if I can kind of freeform it, freeform it down. You see, and a lot of times on the sideline, you actually catch that pass. So keep that in mind. So you have that route. And then the other route that you have that's really, really the better route is if they bite down on this drag route underneath, you're going to be able to throw this post right here, and then you're just going to click on and catch it. So when you throw the post, it is kind of important, and, and I would say what you generally want to be doing is probably smart routing this route, but when you throw the post, you want to click on, and you've got to come back to the ball to kind of avoid the KOs. So you see freeform down, boom, just like that. Really nice little route, kind of gets you that middle of the field spacing. Now, on top of that setup, what I like to do is another setup that's very similar. Um, it's a little bit more of an old school setup, but this will help you block a lot of blitzes. We're going to drag our tight end, in route our outside bunch receiver, motion him out, and we're going to streak this guy. Super old school setup, but really good because you've got two man beaters coming over the underneath middle, and then you've got the post route 
and that's where 20 out of 20 can be a little dangerous because you can free form too far. Um, but you have the post route coming back over the middle. So we'll show this again. And again, this would be, I would definitely be blocking my running back if I was running this setup. But what you'll see, tight end, boom, boom. And then you got that coming underneath. So I, I really like this play for man coverage. If I'm getting a lot of man coverage, these couple setups here, wide trail, I think are pretty good uh, for attacking main coverage. The next play that we're going to be going over is Durham, and I think this is probably one of the more versatile plays in the formation and truly definitely one of the better plays. So what we're going to do out of this, um, back to our slot apprentice, is we're going to slot apprentice post the slot receiver, drag the tight end, put the running back on either a streak or a wheel route. Now, if you're to the wide side of the field, I like to put him on a wheel. If you're short side, I like to put him on a streak. So you can kind of keep that up to you. Uh, this forces them now over here on the left side to have to respect the fact that we have a fade. So if they're just playing you in press man-to-man -man coverage on that left side, using this would be a great way to attack that because now they got to put safety help over there. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll drop that guy into an outside third. Okay, So if they're dropping that guy into an outside third, you'll see here, he'll actually play that a lot better. But now you have your tight end underneath. That's a really nice route against man coverage this year. So you have your tight end underneath that's going to be able to do a really good job of beating man coverage. They'll probably drop a zone under there. So they may, you know, maybe they drop this guy on the right hand, uh, on the left hand side here into a flat. And then this is where your slot receiver is so valuable. You'll see the slot apprentice as he gets bumped um, to all, all <laughs> he just gets absolutely caged. He's going to typically get open against press man. Uh, practice mode man coverage is a little different than what you'll actually experience in game. So just kind of keep that in mind. Just the way the bumping happens in practice mode, like you see here, he gets absolutely caged. That that maybe happens once or twice. I've very rarely seen that. So uh, just keep that in mind because, you know, this this is one of the better routes you have in the game against man coverage. I'll show it to you one more time. Let's see if I actually uh, get open. That right there is more likely of what you're going to see. So you have the slot apprentice post against man coverage. Again, if they are putting their um, if they're running man coverage on you specifically and they're not putting safety help over here to the right side, guess who's going to be open? Your uh, actually it was a kind of a low key bad throw, but you have your running back um, over there on the right hand side as well. Let me see if I can actually throw it here as I get screamed at out of cover one robber. Yeah, um, they're going to have to respect the right side to your running back. I'm going to get screamed at again. Oh my gosh, this game is something else. Yeah, the running back's open. <laughs> um, running back's open. If you did, you know, if you did this, you could do this setup too if you know it's main coverage. Um, just to kind of isolate that running back a little bit more. But again, now we're kind of getting back to wide trail. So just keep that in mind. What a lot of times they're going to be doing here on the right is essentially this running back actually won't be covered. So you might get something like this. Right, and then their user and the running back, they're going to midpoint, right? But they have to go to the slot because the slot receiver is going to win every single time. So a lot of times they'll go like act like they're going to the running back, but then they go to the slot, and you'll see right here that there's just this massive void over here on the numbers to be able to throw the running back against that coverage. So super, super effective play against man to man. And then I want to show you this against zone. So this is also really effective against zone coverage. The first read here is you really want to try to hit this route to Sanders um, quick out of the backfield. If they are not, if they are not uh, hard flatting, a lot of times this can get open. So if they're part, if they're using curl flats or stuff like that, please look out here because this can be wide open for a quick throw. All right. Again, that's going to force them to have to man up circle uh, that outside bunch receiver, which is going to do a really good job of opening up other things for us later on. Uh, but normally what happens is they're going to go to him and then the running back will be right open, wide open up in that little seam. Really, really nice little play and uh, really easy to be able to hit that consistently. Now, the other thing that you have, and this is another reason why I really like this specific setup, is if they're running 30-yard clouds or they're running the cover two stuff on you, he will actually clear that. That um, deep wheel route will actually clear that, and the running back will be pulling the deep half defender. So you'll be able to hit this for a big hitter against, uh, against cover, cover um uh, two. Now, let's say their user runs to the right side of the screen. Well, you have a simple high-low here on the left side. So you could typically throw this 
to your slot apprentice post every single time. So they have to use the post. If they don't use the post, then you got your running back underneath. Last play I want to cover with you guys in this video is going to be RPO alert screen. I think this is one of the better plays in the game. And um, the reason why is just because it's hard to stop, right? Super simple play. Typically, you're just looking out there. If the if the bubble screen's open, you're going to throw it. If it's not open, I want to show you what happens if we just let the play run. If we just let the play run, a lot of times it's just going to hand the ball off to the running back. Okay, So you either throw your bubble screen or you hand the ball off to your running back. Super simple. Um, but I this, this is such a tough play to guard. It, it's a really good route. Um, man coverage does a little better job than zone. But if they're running these soft zone coverages on you, this right here, as you see, just super good against these soft zone coverages. And it's going to, again, require them to have to start manning up that circle receiver to stop the RPO, to stop the short corner route, to stop some of those different route combos, right? And then that's where you could go to a setup, like even out of corner strike, where we go to this right here where we go to the double corner route, but now we're doing it with the tight end short corner as opposed to, um, you know, this guy here. So, because we know they're cross bending him, right? So what we could do, we could do out of this is something simple like this. And as you see, watch this tight end, he'll get right underneath the quarter. So that's how you can kind of use a tight end apprentice as well with this. Uh, one of, I mean, this is just such a good offense. And actually, you know what I'll do is I'll throw a little red zone money play in here for you as well. I think one of the better ways to score inside the red zone, inside the five-yard line in general this year, is with the combo that I'm about to show you. So this is one of my favorite red zone concepts this year. What we're going to do is we're going to do – you could do it out of corner strike or other plays as well. I like doing it out of corner strike. Again, they're probably going to be manning up circle, almost guaranteed they're going to be manning up circle. So what I like to do is actually put circle on a hitch. We're going to put the slot receiver on a slot apprentice post. We're going to smart route that slot apprentice post. We're going to curl the solo wide receiver, and we're going to smart route him as well. And then with the running back, you can really do whatever you want with him. Um, but I love this play in the red zone. First and foremost, this uh, tight end little speed out is really good against man coverage. So if they're just playing you in man coverage on the red zone, you can throw that and typically be able to hit that for a touchdown. So that's one option. Uh, that's really option A that we want to look to just right out of the bat. Can we hit that? And if we can, we're going to throw it. Now, option B, and really the more popular, especially if they're running that cover two that everybody runs in the red zone, is this post. And what you'll see here is that curl will hold that cloud, and you can throw the post right in the back of the end zone. Guys, I want to thank you for watching the video. If you like this video, you'll love the Patreon. It will help you become a better Madden player. You can sign up by heading down to the description and clicking the link down below.